What's up guys, Richland and Hella Bass back here with another video. And we're gonna talk a little bit about fancy fishing and how to pick your team and how to do well at fancy fishing. Um, but first, before we get into that, a little bit of an announcement, something exciting. We have announced our partner for our giveaways, or our main title partner for giveaways for the Fantasy Fishing Edge series and podcast. Um, so here, take a look. It's Bass Utopia. Yep. So if you're not familiar with Bass Utopia, make sure you check them out. Full of great information, uh, top tactics, tips from top pros like Seth Bider, Patrick Walters, and a whole lot more. Um, there'll be some links down in the description below. So make sure you check those out, follow along, and uh, all the more reason to play fantasy fishing because you're definitely gonna win some of the prize packs they put together for us. So now, that being said, let's dig into it. If you're new to fantasy fishing, if you wanna win, so make sure you watch the video all the way to the end to learn the five best ways to pick a fantasy and fishy team, just minutes per event to get your lineups in and be eligible to win great prizes. What's up guys? Now we're gonna dig into how to play fantasy fishing and how to pick your team. Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing has a pretty good uh, basic how to play, tells you how to register, assemble your team, pick your team, but we're going to kind of take an in-depth look at some strategies on how you can pick your team and how you can pick a team as little as two minutes and be competitive, or if you really want to go all in and spend hours pouring over the data, you truly can. So we're going to touch on each one of those today and talk about the top five uh, ways to do fantasy fishing research and prepare your team to beat your friends and rise to the top. All right, so don't forget, uh, group directory here, you want to make sure you join the Beat Hellabass group. This is the group for you guys, uh, prizes from Bass Utopia and others uh, for every event. So make sure you uh, join that league. Uh, there'll be links in the description below for all of that. Let's talk about those strategies. The basic thing, here are the buckets. Let's talk about how they work, what they look like. Really, essentially all you need to do is select the top finishing angler in each bucket for each tournament and you will dominate so let's talk about how to do that so basically there are five buckets for every tournament and there's you know in my mind five ways to really look at uh picking your team that makes sense we'll use each one of these buckets to discuss uh how to do that and why that would make sense bucket e uh let's just talk about the bucket so bucket a b c d e bucket e is the anglers that are kind of lower ranked or predicted to do less well in this tournament um, or that are doing uh, performing lower in the uh, angler of the year standing so in the beginning of the season bass fantasy staff kind of slots these anglers based on uh, previous history on this body of water and how they've done in bass tournaments in general and how much history they have with Bassmaster um, to start the season so you'll see a lot of rookies or guys that didn't do great in 2019 or 2018 towards the lower end of the buckets once the season gets going, it goes off Bassmaster AOI and Fancy Fishing Rankings. We'll talk more about that. So these buckets change every single event uh, based on how they're performing each year. You may find a guy you love in Bucket E or Bucket D. If they do well, they're going to start climbing up the buckets and, in theory, facing stiffer and stiffer competition as they perform better. Fancy Fishing is supposed to be fun, so if you just want to go in there, random, pick people because you like their name, you like the way they look, the sponsors. Um, you can learn a lot about by people by clicking on their names. It's going to open their profile. So you can learn a lot about people by clicking on their name. It's going to open their Bassmaster profile. Uh, you can see who their sponsors are, where they're from. You can look at their uh, their data. So all of that is possible. You know, much like the person in your office, March Madness NCAA bracket, they have never watched a college basketball game in their entire life or all season. They go through the bracket and pick what sounds good to them, and they end up winning the pool. It could be the same thing in fantasy fishing for sure. If you want to throw darts, any way you want to randomly pick them is a good option. Just have fun. Take a few minutes, fill out a lineup, and see what happens. Maybe they're from your hotel. Maybe it's somebody you fished against. So like, hey, Caleb Cuphall, I fished against him in a BFL tournament. I'm going to pick him for bucket E. Then you would switch to bucket D, and there you're looking at a fresh new set of anglers. Uh, so for bucket D, let's talk about you know just following the crowds. Go with the favorites. Go with chalk. So one of the things you can do um, is right now you can't sort by rank or points, but you can once the um, the season starts, this data will start populating, but we can go by own percent. Uh, the fan favorite this week is Stephen Kennedy. Uh, he's a very popular, capable angler. So you can just always sort by own percentage and look at the top few anglers in each bucket and just kind of follow the chalk. It's kind of like taking the top seeds in the NCAA bracket. Uh, take the favorites and go with the majority. You may not break out from the crowd or create much separation, but you're probably still going to be in the hunt 
uh, and not embarrass yourself too much by uh, taking the favorites in each bucket or in some of the buckets. Maybe sometimes there's somebody that catches your eye uh, or you like where they're from uh, or they're just a favorite angler of you, but and sometimes you can default to, hey, I'm just going to go with the top own percentage when I'm not sure. Bucket C, let's talk about picking geographically. This first tournament of the year is in Florida. Typically, if you're from a region of the country and you're a professional angler, you've probably fished most of the lakes in that region or you've fished a fair amount of lakes that are similar to the one that you're fishing. It's never a totally terrible idea to look at some of the people. Um, so like see Kobe Krieger here is from Florida. He's probably fished the St. John's. He's the only Florida bucket angler in there, but you may say, hey, you know what? Alabama's not far away. Uh, if you want to change your anglers, you can just hit minus uh, there, and then you add, uh, you know, somebody like Kelly J. Um, or you can subtract them over here and go back with, hey, uh, you know, maybe Brandon Cobb. That's South Carolina is close to Florida, whatever that may be. Think about the regions of the country, the home states. That's not a terrible idea when picking either. So that's another strategy uh, that you can employ. So bucket B, let's talk about uh, just kind of going with the hot hand or what's really happening in the sport. So each, after this first tournament, um, there is gonna be a fantasy fishing rank, which if you click on this and you sort by fantasy fishing rank, uh, it will sort who has the most points in fantasy fishing. Um, the other way to look at it is the AOI rankings, which they are gonna be very similar, but they won't always be the same, and let me tell you why. AOI rankings are based on, they have a point structure for how they finish in the tournaments. Uh, there are also some bonuses for winning tournaments uh, in AOI. The fantasy fishing has some slightly, and I think leading days in AOI, uh, have some bonus points. Um, fantasy fishing is set up very similar, but some of the bonus points for leading days and big fish, and some of those things are slightly different for fantasy fishing, so that will shake out slightly different. Plus, there are some events potentially like the classic that will be a fantasy fishing event that won't count towards the AOI event. So if an angler qualified for the classic, he's gonna get more points by finishing fantasy fishing, so he's gonna have a higher fantasy rank. Uh, but either way, you can sort by rank uh, in fantasy fishing, uh, right now they're not picked up, but you know, uh, so you could pick somebody that finished very high in the AOI from last year. You could look at the 2019 AOI standings uh, and go with that. Uh, somebody like uh, John Cruz did pretty well last year. Let's pick him for our fantasy uh, team. So you look at that current rankings, you take the top person in each bucket or the top AOI finish in each bucket, and that is a strong way to pick somebody in your team. And those will be more apparent and easy to see once the season gets going. So bucket A is where it really gets interesting. If you really want to take the time and do a ton of research, there are a lot of methods out there and there's a lot of information available to you if you're willing to dig for it. And you don't necessarily have to know a ton about fantasy fishing. So you can look for data on the actual lakes that they have fished where they're fishing the tournament, or you can also look at lakes or tournaments where that fish similarly. So a lot of the highland impoundments in the Ozarks fish similar to some of the Carolina lakes or something like that. Um, highland impoundments across the country fish similarly. Florida has a lot of grass, so you may select uh, anglers that do well fishing in grass. So people from like Minnesota, New York, Wisconsin that fish the uh, Mississippi River and a lot of our lakes know a lot about fishing grass and they do well in Florida sometimes. Uh, also Texas anglers know a lot about grass. So you can look for anglers that fit strengths in certain regions and sometimes they apply. So then you kind of need to know a little bit more about fishing. But if you're not knowledgeable about fishing, you can really focus on what state or the actual lake that they're fishing. So let's jump into some of those tools. In the research tab uh, for fantasy fishing, Bassmaster creates uh, a list of all the, the Elite Series tournaments going back to like 2012 or something like that. So you could look back last year and you could click and see how everybody finished. Uh, the winner was Rick Clun last year on the St. John's River. Uh, and you can click on that and say, hey, great, let me look through this. Let me see where everybody in the buckets. And you can see the, the bonus point structure here. Uh, big bag, big bass, leader bonus, and how many fantasy points they got at the last event. So that's a quick way to kind of check if they fished this type of, or they fished the same body of water within the last couple of years. You can look at past results very easily on bassmanager.com. You can also take a look at the pundit picks uh, on the fantasy fishing homepage. You can jump through and you can see there are articles from uh, Pete Robbins, Koi Greathouse, and yours truly. Uh, so if you want, read those articles, take a look at them. They'll give you some insight. They typically talk about what's going to happen at this tournament. Uh, and they usually give at least one or two anglers in each bucket that they really like. Uh, so make sure you take a look at that. There will be links in the description on how to look at those articles as well. There are some third-party sites like Bass Rankings. They have kind of stopped updating it, but there is a lot of data for several years. 
uh, that you can go back and look at professional tournaments. So if you go into states uh, and lakes, you click on Florida, for instance, this week because we're down at the St. John's coming up. And then you can go down and pick a popular water like this. And you're going to see what anglers, and there's going to be some ways to go through this. You can look at actual, and you can change the search criteria. So if you really want to dig in, uh, you can do that on BassRankings.com. It's a little more complicated, but it's definitely a tool for you. If you're really into this, you can search past results, uh, things like that. You can build your own spreadsheets, and you can come up with tables like this. So anybody that wants to do a little bit of Google searching, some copying, pasting, some V lookups and things like that, you can build a very comprehensive past results and look at people's averages finishes for each bucket and make your own conclusion that way. This is an example from last year's Bassmasters Classic that somebody shared their data with me. Um, there's also some people that take it to a more statistical level with times in cuts, percentage of money events, and they build their own data tables uh, and things like that. So if this is something you're interested in doing, this is definitely the level of detail you can take it to. So this statistical analysis method is a lot like the money ball uh, of bass fishing, but don't feel intimidated that you need to do this because a lot of times you can just go with your gut and have fun uh, fantasy fishing. So one more thing to show you. So one more thing to show you is uh, if you're really unsure about anglers, feel free to go in, uh, click on their names. So once you get onto their biography, click, uh, you've clicked on their name, you're looking at them. If you want to see how well they've done, uh, you can look at times in the money. You can look at tournament tournament appearances and wins. So if you look at their total tournaments, you can scroll through and look at how they've done. One thing I really like to do is hit Control F on my keyboard and then search a keyword like John's. So once I do that, I can quickly flip through and see Drew Benton has a finish of 21st uh, last year, which is pretty solid. He's got a fourth uh, a couple years ago. Um, so, hey, it checks out. There's a good reason he's on the A bucket. I can quickly go through there and look at that. If you don't want to look specifically at that body of water, um, you could look at just Florida um, and look at all the finishes in Florida. So he also has fished Okeechobee and has a top 11 finish there, which is very good. Um, and then, you know, back previously had some open experience on the Harris chain where he had a middle of the pack finish. So those are quick ways to go through and see a lot of data and check up on anglers if you really want to dig in. So in the end, based on my research, um, you know, hey, Rick Clunz won this the two out of the three last times I've been there. He would be a good pick based on research. Uh, you'll need to set a fantasy fishing lineup uh, or a tie-breaking weight. Uh, so you can look at past results to set that up. You can share your results on uh, social media if you'd like to. But in the end, I suggest most people trust their gut. Go in there, see what feels good. Uh, go with your instinct, make some picks uh, that typically serves you quite well like it does in many other ways in life, and just have fun playing the game. That's the point. Spend a few minutes each week getting your lineup in for each tournament, have fun, win some prizes. So that's it for how to play and how to dominate at Fantasy Fishing. I hope you learned something new that you didn't already know. Make sure you follow along uh, and subscribe to the channel so you see all my picks videos and pundit picks articles throughout the entire season and you don't miss getting your uh, lineups in every week. Follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Hellbass. You'll also see notifications there so you'll never miss getting your Fantasy Fishing lineup in again. Thanks for tuning in. Leave some comments below. Let me know what you learned or if you've got some sites that you think are great for fantasy fishing research, share them below in the comments. And until next time, we'll help you suck less at fantasy fishing.